Sometimes it's not the picture in itself that uh, triggers my story, but rather what the picture makes me think of, or in this case, photograph. And here we have mist, and the way I sort of do this whole setup is I just go through my archives of photographs. I think, oh yeah, that's interesting, that one. And a thought usually springs to mind, a thought or memory usually springs to mind when I look at a picture. And in this case, I look at this mist, and I suddenly realize I actually like misty mornings. I've always liked them. I've found them magical. I've found them pretty fascinating. And this goes, so, so this was a morning close to the University of Amsterdam, the, um, I, I've forgotten what campus they call it, but it's a bit towards the east, towards the science park. And I was just wandering around and I saw this thick mist there and I thought, oh yeah, I took a few pictures. I actually took pictures of the whole area because this was taken during a phase when I'd walk around a lot and take a lot of photographs of whatever I saw. But um, mist has always been something special. And I remember as a kid, one of the things that were in Oxford growing up, growing up in Oxford, one of the most fascinating things was that you'd be cycling on your bike and it was very foggy or misty and the sounds were odd. The sounds are all strange. They were never quite as clear. And then around you, it's as if the world, half of the world had disappeared. You knew it was there. You could sense it, but you couldn't see it. And as you're moving between A and B, things would suddenly appear. First you see a bit of a, hey, is there something there? And then it would be a silhouette, and it could be a person or people and stuff like that. And I quite enjoyed that. Then later on in school, um, one of the rugby pitches, was, we had these plateaus. And on the top plateau, the upper plateau, was uh, I think there were two rugby fields, or at least during the rugby season they were there. And sometimes we we would be playing and it would be foggy and we just loved the idea that people would disappear. So you sort of um, be walk looking at each other and you'd both walk backwards and walk backwards and the distance between both of you would increase until you'd vanish into the fog. And that was always very cool. Then uh, many, many years later, by this time I'm now in, in uh, the Netherlands, uh, I'd go to work in Rotterdam, so I'd be in the train. And I remember one morning, there are a lot of fields as the train goes from Amsterdam to Rotterdam, it does pass a number of fields. And of course, the Netherlands are very flat. So I remember passing a field and there were cows there. And there was this, this mist, but it was really, really low. So it was about, I don't know, about a meter high or something like a meter 10 high, uh, the height of the mist. And so you saw the cows, the upper part of the cows and the lower parts of the cows were simply not there. And I wondered, what are these cows thinking? Are there sort of are the cows thinking, uh, what's going on? Because our legs have disappeared. I have no idea. But that was a nice misty experience. Um, I also know that there are people who don't like mist. I remember, uh, actually, sometimes mist can be scary, mist and fog. I do remember I had gone to visit some people in a place called Almira, and I, I'd been talking away, chatting away, and. We had missed all the warnings that, look, it's going to get really, 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 he you're going to get very, very heavy mist, heavy, very, very heavy fog. So please be careful. And yeah, I ignored the warnings and I went home. But it was very frightening, I have to admit. I'm not a, a hero or a macho kind of person. I do like a bit of adventure, but this was scary because you can see nothing. And uh, fog lamps, uh, I've quickly realized why you have fog lamps, because if you go onto high beam, you just see nothing. You just get white in front of you. And so you slow down, but you hope that if somebody is coming behind, they realize that you've also slowed down, because where you'd normally do 100 kilometers an hour, you're suddenly doing about 40. And you hope that anybody else, uh, you, you do have some crazy people who will just try and do the 100, maybe it's... Uh, an act of coolness, goodness knows what it is. But that was, um, I think that was the only time I'd been, I've been uh, worried by mist. Generally speaking, I'm a pro-mist person, not every day. I mean, mist shouldn't be there every day, but when the mist is there, I do enjoy it, uh, especially on the River Eye on certain mornings.
That said, um, you do have missed haters, and I think the missed haters have probably um, watched too many, many thrillers or horror films where the mist is this blanket be covering something nasty and uh, dangerous. So I'm not in that group. I'm really a mist is good for the soul, mist makes you happy, mist makes magic happen, etc., etc. I don't know where you are, only you do.